As days go by, we seem to keep getting new footage from Netflix regarding their upcoming live-action series adaptation for Avatar The Last Airbender. On today's video, we will be diving into a short clip that was recently released, but that it has a lot to say when it comes to the adaptation itself and how faithful the Netflix series is going to be to the original series. From what you saw in the title of this video, the snippet that we're going to be analyzing in today's video is a clip of King Boomy. This video clip that we're mentioning is part of a promotional video that Netflix released entitled Next on Netflix 2024, the series and films preview. In the video, Netflix shows us what shows and movies we will be getting throughout the year and gives us a glimpse of these in a form of montage. Obviously, this includes a snippet of Avatar, The Last Airbender, which is what we will be analyzing today. Now, before we get into it, let's watch this clip that involves the mad genius himself, King Boomy. As you can see, the clip itself isn't that long but it certainly says a lot about the showrunners and the adaptation itself. The clip is a scene of Aang and King Boomy fighting. Specifically, it's when King Boomy has Aang on trial. We can appreciate that just like the animated series. By this time, Aang hasn't even started to earthbend, and we can clearly see that the way he's fighting is with pure airbending techniques. So far, it looks like the live-action adaptation is going on the right path, and it shows that the showrunners did their homework and are following the original series correctly. But what left a lot of us in awe is the fact that they actually managed to recreate Aang's dodging the boulder that King Boomy is earthbending with a backflip, which fans can vividly remember from the animated series. Not only that, but we also get to see the visual effects of the earthbending style. Some fans argue that it's hard to appreciate or that earthbending itself doesn't look as good as the other elements are shown. Personally, we think that lighting is a factor that affects it in this specific scenario, and that in order to truly appreciate the bending in this live-action setting, we would have to wait to see other scenes where we can appreciate it better. Why exactly is it this scene with Aang so surprising? As we mentioned in other videos of this channel, it isn't easy doing a recreation of events for a live-action adaptation, especially if the original series is animated. Not all the scenes can translate well to live-action. This is because when it comes to an animated series, these tend to have a lot of fiction. And sure, with today's technology, it may be easier to do things than back in the day, but it still doesn't change that. It definitely doesn't adapt 100% accurately. So, when it came to this scene itself, it did surprise us that they managed to recreate it so well. Now, from the looks of it, we also see that one of King Boomy's most recognizable character traits is also present of this short clip. And of course, we mean his wacky personality. At first glance, you maybe missed this detail, and we wouldn't judge you because of it, because this is something that we noticed only after analyzing it a couple of times. Why is it so important, you may ask? Well, this character trait is one that defines King Boomy. You can nail how a character looks on a recreation. It can be a spot on 10 out of 10. But if the character doesn't show that its personality matches that one of the original series, you have a big issue on your hands. Why exactly are they fighting in this scene? And what happened in order for it to come to this? In the fifth episode of the first season of Avatar The Last Airbender, called the King of Omashu, Aang and his friends arrive in the Earth Kingdom city of Omashu. Sokka and Katara are amazed at the sight of Omashu, noting how they do not have any cities like Omashu back at the South Pole, including having buildings that do not melt in the heat. Aang shows them the Omashu delivery system, which consists of miles of tubes and chutes that send packages throughout the city via earthbending. He also tells them that 100 years in the past, he and his eccentric childhood friend, Bumi, would slide down the Omashu delivery system for fun. Bumi told Aang to always open his brain to the possibilities in life, and Aang affectionately called Bumi a mad genius. Aang promises Katara that they will go to the North Pole once they have a ride down the chutes. 
They go to the highest point in the city and slide down, almost getting killed by a package of spears following behind them as they slide. Aang derails them from the chute, and their bin scrapes across the rooftops of several houses. Panicking, they cannot stop and crash into the cabbage merchant's cart, who screams in dismay for his ruined cabbages. They are surrounded by guards and taken captive to be punished by the king of Omashu for vandalism, traveling under false pretenses and malicious destruction of cabbages. The king, an aged old man, looks for a while at Ang, and, instead of punishment, orders that they shall be thrown a feast to the surprise of the guards and Team Avatar. At the feast, the king inquires about where Ang came from, to which Ang lies that he came from Kangaroo Island. The king cracks a joke, saying he has heard that place is really hoppin', which only Sokka laughs at. Feigning his departure from the table, the king suddenly throws a chicken drumstick at Aang, causing him to catch it with airbending out of reflex, revealing to everyone that he is the Avatar. Ang and the others try to leave but are detained by the guards. The king declares that the Avatar shall face three deadly challenges the next day to win the freedom of himself and his friends, and locks them in a recently refurbished chamber. The next day, Aang wakes and finds Sokka and Katara are missing. The king holds them hostage and promises to return them once the challenges are completed. Aang threatens the king and demands he return his friends immediately, but the king brings forth Sokka and Katara and has rings of genomite placed on their fingers. Known as Creeping Crystal, the crystals will grow until they cover the entire body, and only the king can undo the process. For the safety of his friends, Aang agrees to undertake the king's challenges. Aang successfully completes the first two challenges, and for his final challenge, he is found in a large arena, where he must battle an opponent in a one-on-one -on -one duel of his own choosing. He is offered two options in the form of two formidable and foreboding warriors. A nasty-looking assassin with sharp teeth and a sharper war scythe, and a buff, hulking-masked gladiator with an axe. Aang asks for clarification that he can fight whoever he points at, and the king simply warns him to choose carefully. To that end, Aang chooses the king, who declares he made the wrong choice, removing his robes to reveal a surprisingly muscular physique for such an old man. And that brings us to the point that we already analyzed and discussed. As you can see, this fighting scene is a part of Aang's trial in order to save his friends, who we then find out that weren't in actual danger. Now, seeing how the backflip scene was created successfully, we're also excited to see other things, like for example the rings of genomite and how the crystals grow until they cover Katara and Sokka's entire body. Tell us, What's your opinion on this? Did we miss anything? What other scenes are you excited to see in the live-action adaptation of Netflix's Avatar, The Last Airbender? Are you pleased with what has been shown so far regarding this highly anticipated Netflix series? Let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this.